It's not exactly news that over the last decade and a half, the Australian brewing industry has undergone significant change. We've seen the rise of small brewers, brewers that have marked out a point of difference by bringing a lot of hop flavour and hop character to the beers that they're making. Because of this, we've seen hops go from being regarded as something of a commodity crop to being seen as the rock star of the craft beer world. Hop varieties such as Ella, Galaxy and Vic Secret have come to be highly sought after by brewers and not just for their bittering characteristics but also for the flavour and aroma they bring to a beer. Of course, these hops haven't just sprouted. They've been developed by Hop Products Australia through their hop breeding program carried out both at Bushy Park and Ross Trevor in Victoria. Today we're in the hop breeding garden and I've come down to meet Dr Simon Whittock, the man in charge of HPA's hop breeding program to find out a little bit more about the process for breeding hops. G'day Simon. G'day mate, how are you going? Good mate. Yeah, nice to see you. What's going on here? So these are our sleeves for controlled pollination, which we, we put on the female plants before the flowers are receptive and we come back a bit later when the flowers are receptive and put in the pollen that we want to fertilise those flowers with. And this is a whole block of experimental varieties that you've carefully selected one of the parents? So this, this area here is our germplasm collection, so it's international you know, historical cultivars and breeding lines that we've developed here in Australia or from overseas. How about we head over and check out the propagation sheds? Yeah, okay, be happy to show. Simon, thanks for having Bruce News down to Bushy Park to learn a little bit about the Hop Products Australia hop breeding program. Can you tell us how long Hop Products Australia has been breeding hops? The hop breeding program that operated here at HPA has run continuously. It's had some different guises, but it's run continuously since 1950. Why is it so important that HPA doesn't just grow hops, but you also breed them? We see this as really important to the brewer because it allows us to make good decisions in our breeding program that result in high quality hops for the brewer. The genetic diversity that we work with in our program has implications for brewers in that when we are making crosses now, that hopefully will allow us to have flavour options on the table for brewers in 10 years time that don't exist currently. Is HBA's program different to what's going on anywhere else in the world? Hop Products Australia's hop breeding program and new cultivar development program uh, has a significant advantage over many of the other hop breeding programs around the world because of our level of integration within the business. We, we own the process from the crossing of new cultivars right through to the, the box of hops that ends up in breweries all around the world. What are you trying to obtain through the program? Our primary breeding goal, if you like, is, is for yield as a, as a hop grower. Uh, but in behind that, we're looking for consistency of yield over a number of years, and we're also looking for hops that yield well at a high quality level over a number of days when the crop is mature. So if you imagine growing 100 hectares of one variety, if that is all at its peak maturity on a single day, we're not going to be able to harvest the whole crop at that peak maturity. Whereas a plant or a genotype that is um, at peak brewing quality over a number of days, we're able to harvest a greater acreage at a higher quality, which has uh, implications for our own, own production and it also has implications for the quality of the hops that a brewer gets to use. The hop breeding program generates new cultivars of interest in every year, uh, and it has to be that way because the lead times are 10 to 12 years. So you can't just start a program and have an answer in a 12 month cycle, it's got to be conducted on an annual basis and keep the system rolling. What's the actual process for breeding hops? The process of crossing hops starts in January every year. We have to go to the field, and we collect pollen from male plants and we isolate flowers on female plants before they're receptive. Uh, and then we get to make a choice around which pollen to put on which female and once we have confirmed that we've got fertile isolated female flowers we can add the pollen that we want to that female flower. We, we conduct about 40 of those crosses every year. And what are you looking for from that? We look for new cultivar outcomes but we're also looking for information about the performance of that female and that male. 
Is it a random process? Are you just mixing and matching uh, different parents to see what comes? The process is as far from random as we can make it in that we use very well characterised female plants and we use the crossing and evaluation process to tell us about the characteristics that you get from the male plants. And we try to use well characterised genotypes from both males and females to drive the outcomes in the directions that we're interested in. So what happens when you've selected the parents and the pollination takes place? The cross-pollination process results in what we call seed lots. We generate around or somewhere between two and four thousand seedlings in each year which get deployed into field trials. The next step with the seed lots we collect the hop cones from the plants when the fruit is mature, so when the seed is mature. We stratify the seed to enhance germination. We then germinate the seed in the nursery, grow that on until it's uh, a big enough plant to establish in the field. So typically we'll start to germinate the seed in late August. And we'll establish the field trials in November or December of the same year. What happens to all of the offspring of that process? We whittle down our seedling populations over a number of years. We rely heavily on field trials. Uh, we, the first screen is for uh, sex phenotype, so we're specifically looking, in terms of new cultivars, we're specifically looking for female plants. So the first screen that we do is to eliminate male and hermaphrodite plants in those seedling populations. We then go in and look at the, uh, the growth characteristics of the female plants. Following that, we look at um, the plant structural traits as they relate to, to yield outcomes and we make decisions after about two years as to which ones to maintain in the program. How long is it typically between cross-pollination and actual brewing trials? The timeline from generating a new cross to sending a genotype into brewing trials would typically not be less than about six years. Uh, and depending on what has happened in the program, since, since the cross was conducted, it might be as many as eight to 10 years. What's an example of a hop that has come through the program? A good example of the timeline in our development program can be seen with Galaxy, which was uh, generated in 1994 as part of thousands of seedlings, then went through a 10 to 15 year process of field trials and brewing trials to identify that single genotype from the tens of thousands. And now, with a couple of hundred hectares of Galaxy deployed across both our farms, every single one of those plants in those couple of hundred hectares is exactly the same genotype originating from that cross, that seedling in 1994. It sounds like it's a long time coming, but with hops like Galaxy and Big Secret, it sounds like it's really worth the wait.